This AI named Greg has been training for more than 100 hours to shoot at everything that moves, and so it happened that the only thing moving here is our old friend Pogo. Initially, I've set the two AI to compete with each other, where Pogo's goal is to reach to the barricade alive, while the shooter's goal is, well, to shoot down Pogo. I have then took over Pogo's controls and tried to win the game myself, which wasn't as easy as I thought, but don't take my word for it. Make sure to stick till the end of this video and I will show how you can play against Greg as well. The idea of this simulation is rather simple. We have our running fella named Pogo, who as previously mentioned has only one goal in his life and that is to reach to this barricade. I mean, sometimes you just gotta follow your dreams. Oh, right, he will also try to avoid getting shot, so I guess he has two goals in his life. Ambitious little guy. Pogo can move forwards and backwards, as well as rotate left and right, which should allow him to freely navigate the environment and try to dodge bullets flying towards him. Which, by the way, he will be able to see thanks to several sets of raycasts fired in different directions. When such a ray collides with a bullet or an obstacle, it returns the distance and the object type of that collider. But enough about Pogo. He ain't nothing but a pawn in this whole simulation, little does he know that he will serve as a target practice and his only purpose is for Greg to get better at shooting so that we can have some fun later on. Unlike Pogo, who can only move forwards and backwards, Greg can only move right and left along the border. Moreover, Greg is unable to rotate his body, but he ain't complaining because he has a rifle and he can fire it at will. Both agents will have to learn what are the best actions while continuously adapting their strategies to match their opponent, and they will do that using reinforcement learning. In human words, our agents will be rewarded for performing correct actions while being punished for the wrong ones. So in our example, Greg will be rewarded for each new hole that appears on Pogo's body, as well as for winning the round, aka unaliving Pogo. And since bullets are pretty expensive, Pogo will receive a small punishment for each bullet fired so that he actually learns the value of money and starts appreciating the investments made for his training. Oh, right, he will also get a huge punishment if he lets Pogo touch the barricades. Nobody touches the barricades. Pogo, on the other hand, will get incremental rewards for getting closer to the border, while being punished for getting shot, because getting wounded is obviously not enough of a punishment by itself, lol. Unfortunately, all Pogo cares about is his credit score, so unless you reward or punish him for something, he won't ever understand whether that something is actually detrimental for him, like getting shot. Also, for prophylactic reasons, Pogo will receive a small punishment simply for existing. If there was some alternative to PETA that focuses on AI rights, I'm sure they would be furious. But rest assured, that's also technically beneficial for our AI. Being punished for every second he is alive, as terrible as it sounds, will motivate Pogo to complete the challenge as fast as possible, so that the existence punishment is as small as possible. The reason why I chose Pogo to be another reinforcement learning agent during the training process is because this would allow the runner to attempt and adapt to various strategies, resulting in a much more diverse learning process for Greg. But it ain't just Pogo and Greg who get all the fun of pumping up their brains. Are you thinking about learning a new programming language to bring that dream game to life? Or maybe you want to get into artificial intelligence to craft an AI body so that you can make fun of him? Well, now's your chance, because today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. On Brilliant, you get to explore thousands of interactive lessons in math, data science, programming and AI that are filled with hands-on problem solving. All content on Brilliant is thoughtfully designed by a team of award-winning teachers and scientists to create a journey beyond the boring memorizing, steering you towards problem solving that actually sharpens your critical thinking. Learning something new every day, even in small amounts, will stack up over time and Brilliant offers quick engaging lessons that fit into your schedule, turning spare moments into growth opportunities. Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great way to build foundations and learn real-world applications. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a built-in drag-and-drop editor. Develop your mind to think like a programmer, build a strong foundation in writing robust programs. 
Go to brilliant.org slash Labs or click the link in the description and enjoy 30 days for free as well as a 20% discount on their annual subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to the training. At the beginning, Pogo could barely move, staggering around the same place, and Greg made sure to seize the chance and shot him several times, which served as a really good life lesson, after which Pogo tried to get the hell out of here, but quickly found out he is kinda stuck in this arena. Well, if life gives you lemons, you better make some lemonade. And if life gets you trapped in an eternal loop where your entire purpose is to serve as a target practice for an AI where even the devs embrace cannot rid you of your eternal suffering, well, in that case you better start grinding. Pogo switched to a grinding mindset, strategizing, planning, looking for the best way to approach Greg without getting shot, getting closer and closer with every round and <clears throat> that doesn't count. So, getting closer and closer with every round until finally, on round 142, all that work has paid back big time. Not only Pogo managed to win, but he also found a strategy that allowed him to win every single round. He figured out that there is a way to get behind this rock without ever getting in Greg's line of sight, which left the shooter searching for Pogo in the other end of the map, while our little trickster sneaked his way through across the border. Good on him, but we ain't here to see Pogo flourish, so I immediately reduced the size of all obstacles and moved them a little bit so that now it is much more difficult to remain unnoticed and started the training once again. By the way, it's not only these two AI that are being trained at the moment. In order to speed up the training process, I actually have 20 simulations running in parallel, so every round technically is more like 20 rounds. Once again, from the get-go everything looked good, Pogo was unable to move and kept getting shot by Greg, but once he realized that it's no bueno, he started moving along the spawn line. It wasn't too long until on round 150, Pogo managed to sneak right next to the wall, ignoring the bullet barrage going on right next to him, and eventually securing his first victory. But not only that, this dum dum managed to repeat the success by following the exact same strategy on round 151. And the exact same on round 152. And on round 154, oh no, here he finally got shot by Greg, lol. This must have broke Pogo's spirit somehow, because the next few hundred rounds he kept wandering around and dying. Well, mostly dying actually. Until finally, on round 422, after attempting this spiraling dance technique, which I only assume is meant to hypnotize Greg and induce him in a state of trance, Pogo rushes to the finish line and once again secures a victory. That was a breath of fresh air and I was feeling very optimistic, but that ain't a Zuzello Up's video if something doesn't go terribly wrong, am I right? See if you can spot the issue. Yeah, as you could have noticed, some of the bullets that are fired by Greg are not actually spawning, or so I thought. You might call me biased, but I don't think that's very beneficial for Greg, so I had to fix it. As usual, the solution turned out to be pretty simple. You see, the rock wall surrounding the arena is just for visual purposes. What I actually have is four invisible walls across the perimeter. The reason why some of the bullets were hitting the wall is because I gave Greg a very small body collider, which usually is a good decision since that helps AI avoid getting stuck in narrow spaces, but in this case the bullets ended up having a larger collider than the actual agent. So when Greg was on either of the sides, the spawned bullets would immediately collide with the perimeter wall and disappear. I fixed the collider size and it was time to start training from scratch once again. Yay! My third and final training attempt wasn't any difference at the beginning, with Pogo desperately trying to find his way in life and constantly getting shot at, until he finally managed to secure his first win on round 91 by casually passing right next to the top side of the map. It happened again the very next round, where Pogo, after spending the entire first half gathering courage in the corner, bolted towards the barricades and won. But Greg quickly realized what's going on and put a stop to this trickery. 
After getting on the live over and over again, Pogo gave up and started running in circles, but I was too tired at the time to be bothered, so I decided to let him train overnight and go to bed. Imagine my surprise when I woke up to more than 100 wins for Pogo and imagine my disappointment when I saw that he is still running in circles like an idiot. The reason he kept on winning was because for some weird reason, Greg would completely ignore him and go to the opposite side of the map, allowing Pogo to pass without any issue to the barricades. I was genuinely confused, but despite that, I decided to let the agents train for several more days, and after more than 100 hours of training, here is the final result. We'll have one run for each of the legends subscribed to my Patreon page, starting with Alan Plays, who right off the bat is demonstrating quite an interesting strategy. He makes few steps forward and then randomly a step backwards, which I assume is to confuse Greg, making it more difficult for him to predict the next move. Smart. He is now technically behind the rock where Greg can't see him, so it should be easy to close the distance, which he does right now. While hidden, LND Plays is checking Greg's position to figure out whether the path forward is clear or not. Looks like a good opportunity and LND Plays rushes forward, but he gets confused. Greg saw it and shot LND Plays once, twice, and LND Plays still manages to get to the barricade with only 1 HP left. LND Plays won his round. Let's see what Spartan King will do. Um, well, uh, I don't know why the hell he is running backwards, but it seems he tries to run off the map and not towards the barricades, huh? After some back and forth, Spartan King finally started moving towards the goal, but still running backwards. He doesn't even have eyes on his back, so the AI can't see where he is running, which makes the whole thing even weirder. Meanwhile, Greg is chilling in the opposite side of the map. What the hell is going on? Spartan King seems lost while being right next to the barricades, and you know what? I can't blame him, I'm as confused as he is. Eventually, he runs out of time right in front of the finish line. Oh, that's unfortunate. Round 3, and now Red Nugget will try his luck with a seemingly similar strategy to the one applied by LND plays. We can see a similar movement pattern and an overall idea, however when Red Nugget tries to bolt it for the finish line, Greg immediately steps in and secures the round. Andre Spark has a pretty interesting run as well, starting with this jittery movement, constantly changing his movement and directions to inflict maximum confusion on Greg. Besides getting me dizzy, that shaky movement helped Andre get behind the rock, but there is where the fun part starts. For some reason, this time Greg was adamant about not letting Andre go, keeping a constant eye on him, which led to Andre hesitating to leave the safety of the rock, losing the round because of that. Get Pandon seemed to like the idea and did the exact same thing, and who'd have guessed, but the result was the same, lol. Alright, our last but not least AI, Leonard Averitt, who just said f*** you and your dumb rules, I'm a racing car and proceeds to spin circles around the starting area. Never change, Leonard. But enough with the Pogo AI, let's see how Greg will perform against a true adversary. I have hijacked Pogo's controls, so let's see if I can do any better. Pause this video right now and let me know in the comments who is gonna win, humans or AI. My strategy in the first round is simple, I'll try to go straight for the barricade, but I will run at a slight angle so that I don't run straight into Greg's bullets. Of course it doesn't work and Greg was just luring me closer until I was at a comfortable distance for him to shred me into pieces. In round 2 I tried a similar strategy to the one AI was using, running behind the cover of this rock and also swiftly dodging an incoming bullet like a pro. I then tried to rush towards the barricade through the gap, but Greg saw me and started shooting. As you can see I panicked just a little, trying to run for my life, but Greg finished me soon after. Round 3, and this time I want to make Greg believe I'm doing the same as previous time, but I'll change direction while behind the rock so he can't see me. Of course he sees me the moment I step out of the cover, but it was too late to give up now, so I decided to YOLO it running for my life, feeling overwhelming pressure from Greg who was following all my actions and… I make it? 
Huh. He didn't even shoot at me, did he? Oh well, a win is a win, but that made me think. What if I remove Greg's punishment for firing his weapon? Let the boy have some fun. From the get-go I'm getting sprayed and the game feels way more difficult. Getting hit didn't help reduce my panic levels and at this point I was just trying to survive, dodging every bullet I can, running towards the barricade, but eventually he got me. This time I'm going straight for the rock once again, since that proves to be the best strategy so far. However, Greg seems to be lost in his own thoughts. I'm not sure what caught his attention, but he doesn't care a single bit about me being here. I know his entire purpose is to shoot at me, but that is still kinda sad. Finally, I start round 3 by catching a bullet with my face for motivation reasons and attempt to do the same strategy that won me previous round, where I run behind the rock and switch direction. I catch yet another bullet and that is the approximate moment I forget about the strategy and start desperately running for my life. I dodge every single bullet uh, right until I don't. Alright, that's enough for me, but if you also would like to challenge Greg, the game is available for free on my Patreon page, link in the description. In the meantime, check out this video I made where Pogo has to learn to build fortifications against this tank to protect the $500,000 that are at stake. Bye!